Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Today we want to model this soap film mesh by using the Kangaroo plugin in Grasshopper. And I'm going to teach you how to use the edge length and the soap film combined to produce something like that. You can see I can change the results by changing this box simply by changing the dimension of the box. We're going to model that in Rhino and then bring that into Grasshopper. Uh, I can even play with the edges. For example, I can rotate this maybe 10 degrees and this edge minus 10 degrees. You can see that it's going to give us a new result. We can even change this edge, bring it a little bit up and maybe bring this edge a little bit down. So I'm going to play with that. And you can see that we can update this uh, somehow using the soap film mesh to produce this relaxed mesh in Grasshopper using the Kangaroo plugin. So be sure to watch the video till the end because we're going to model that from scratch and just using a simple box in Rhino. Uh, okay, let's get started from scratch. First, what I wanted to do is to model a box. Let's just get it started from scratch and I'm going to model a box in Rhino. We can go here and use this box corner to corner height and draw it right here like this. Uh, we can get rid of these faces here and produce the base mesh. So I'm going to use the control shift and select these faces and delete them. Uh, now we have this B-Rep poly surface we can use in the Kangaroo plugin. Okay, let's go and in the Parms menu, we can have this one B-Rep as a boundary representation. Let me put the Bifocus plugin so you can see what I'm doing. And we can simply just set this to this B-Rep. Okay, uh, now what I want to do here, uh, let me just turn this off because we're going to change that later but now it's just a simple box uh, we have to use the kangaroo 2 plugin after installing this uh, kangaroo 2 you will have that here the kangaroo 2 tab and we're going to use the main uh, bouncy solver to see the results while the mesh is relaxed so i'm going to use this bouncy solver and here we're going to use that so we have to define first of all the goal objects. What is the goal objects? And I'm going to explain them step by step how we can get the results. Before we do that, we have to have a button here. So it's a button. You can also find that uh, in the params menu and the input. You can see that button. And we usually use that reset button to reset the results to get the best uh, visualization of it. We also need to put this, uh, it's by default on, so be sure that the uh, kangaroo will continue to iterate, so that has to be true. Okay, that's all what we have to do. We have to give this goal objects the input, and we will get the outputs here, which is the relaxed mesh. Okay, first step is to work with the mesh, because uh, kangaroo works with mesh when we use the kangaroo plugin, we have to work with mesh. So we have to convert that into a mesh. How can we do that? You can see uh, actually what we have here is a nerve surface. The best way you can do this is to go to the mesh section and utility. I'm going to use this mesh surface tool. Uh, what is a mesh surface? A mesh surface will give you uh, a convert a nerve surface into a mesh. For example, if I had a simple nerve surface like this, set this to the surface, uh, you can see that this is going to convert that into a UV count mesh. That is for a simple nerve surface. You can see that it actually accepts a nerve surface, but uh, the problem we have here is that this is a poly surface. I mean, if I give this to a mesh surface, it's going to go red because this is uh, basically, let me show you, it uh, consists of three different nerve surfaces. So how can we fix that? We have to convert that into uh, nerve surfaces. We're going to go to this surface part and use this deconstruct uh, B-Rep here. And let me just 
just connect this one, you can see that we have three different faces. So I'm going to bake this so you can see that we have converted that into three different surfaces. Uh, the next step is that if I give that to the surface, for example, let me just show you by giving it a count, seven for the U count and five for the V count. There is a problem here. Uh, let me change this to these numbers. For example, if I go here and change this edges, it's going to give you what's going to happen. Okay, take a look at this. When I move the edge from a box, the number of the division is different in the UV direction. So the problem is that this mesh is not going to connect. We have to connect this mesh together to make a single mesh. And this is not what we need because the edges has to be underneath uh, the connecting edges. So how can we fix that? That's really easy. Let me show you a trick you can always use to fix that UV problem. So what I usually do is to go to the surface and in the analyzers I will use this dimensions tool. Here we can find this dimensions and we'll give it to the surfaces. You can see that this is going to give you uh, the approximate dimensions of a surface. So this is actually not the exact length, but what is important is that these numbers will help you to get a good UV count. Let me show you by giving it a panel. And if you look at this, uh, there is a 91 happening here, which is also happening in the V dimension. Actually, if we multiply these numbers with something, for example, if we multiply by that by 0 0.1, uh, it's going to give us something like this, 449995. This is the trick you can use to have a good UV division. So I usually go to the math, I use this multiplication to multiply that and multiply the U division. Uh, let's just say 25%. Based on your project, remember that this number has to be uh, changed. So I'm going to give that to the U count. And also we need that multiplication for the V division and the V count. Okay, that's too much. We can just decrease that. And you can see that we have a nice smooth mesh in the poly surfaces, which we can connect later. That's the first step. Okay, the next part is that this is three meshes. We have to convert it into one. Uh, if we go to the mesh, there is a utility uh, called mesh join. Here we go, mesh join. You can find it here. But the problem with this mesh join is that it's going to give you one mesh. I'll just show you. But the problem with the kangaroo uh, tutorials is that this mesh is not actually the mesh we want to use because it's not somehow welded together. We have to weld that so it's a complete unified mesh. Instead of this mesh join, I'm going to use the Viver plugin. Be sure to install it. And in the extract, you can see that this uh, Viver bird, uh, Viver bird join meshes and weld. That's the exact thing you need. And we're going to use that uh, mesh weld and go to the weld, set this to true. Okay, what do I mean this by weld? Just let me show you here. Just take a look at these two different meshes. I'll give this a panel. And this is the welded mesh. Okay, you can see that the vertices is decreasing from 120 to 104, that means that it has less vertices and the faces is the same. So that step is necessary to make that unified mesh happen, especially for the vertices. That uh, this is giving you extra vertices, it's going to give you errors. So I'm going to use that mesh and the, uh, okay, let's go to the kangaroo plugin. The most simple step you always want to take in the kangaroo is to show your geometry. So I'm going to use this show 
give my mesh to the show and give that to the goals objectives. Uh, objects, that's going to give you an output of the mesh right here and it's going to give you uh, the output uh, after you reset the results. We can just turn everything off and only turn on the bouncy solver. So this is actually giving us the update if our algorithm is correct or not, uh, or not and Kangaroo is working fine. Okay, the next step is to, I mean the next goal object for this one, is uh, if we want to make this a structure, it's really important that we fix these edges. I mean, these edges has to be fixed. Just think about that. This edge has to be fixed. So if it relaxes, it gives us a complete soap film like mesh. If you look at, let me just show you this with a Google uh, image search. Okay, if you take a look at this image, uh, you can see that this is actually what we are doing. We have to have this fixed edges around here to get this results. So we are actually focusing on this. You can see that I've searched minimal surface soap film and we will have that results. You can uh, make different results with different geometry, but for this tutorial, I have picked this one for you. Okay, let's go and make these vertices fixed. So when you want to make a series of vertex fixed, you have to go to the goal points and give an anchor. So I'm going to give an anchor here and use the shift key to add that up. Remember to right click and flatten so all of these uh, goal objects go to one. And if you don't know about flatten or graft, you can watch this tutorial up here. I've explained that before. Uh, okay, we have to give this point. This is really easy. Uh, what we have to do is to pick up all the edges, right, uh, as I explained. There is a cool trick you can use the Kangaroo plugin to do that. In the mesh section, uh, there are lots of tools you can use. Uh, but what we want to do is to use this naked vertices. And what do I mean by naked vertices? Okay, where does it go? If you give the mesh to the input, you can see that it has two set of points. Let's just connect a point to them. There is clover points. You can see they are inside a mesh. They don't have an edge and they are connected together. But the naked points is exactly what we need. Why is these points not naked? Because they are connected with other surrounding points. But these points, uh, you can see they don't uh, have an adjacent point so that's going to be the naked points we need and we can give them to the points here. You can see that that's nothing is happening here because we just defined an anchor and nothing else. Okay, the last part. So remember the first one is to show something. The second part is always remember to define the anchors because how it's going to stay is really important. And the third step is actually free for you. You can do anything. For example, what I want to do and I usually use for relaxation of the mesh, I go to the goals mesh and use this edge length. Why? Because it's actually going to convert your mesh into something with a spring-like edges. Uh, I mean, it's going to convert each of these edges into a spring. Okay, so it's going to convert them into a spring and they're going to be relaxed by the results. So I'm going to go to the uh, goals mesh edge length and give that to my mesh. Remember that this is, let me just put that in a mesh container so you can see that this is actually the mesh we need. Here it goes and that is the first step the second step and the third step is going to be here, right here. Okay, for the edge length, when you want to relax the mesh, remember that the length factor has to be zero because you want to relax them. It means that it's trying to, uh, at the target edge length, okay, let's just zoom in uh, of the current length. When you put a zero, it means that it's trying to uh, put those springs 
on the tension and those things okay so we're going to use the shift key to add this up here also okay just turn everything off and only see the bouncy solver okay you can see that if I put that into a reset you can see the results that's really cool if I uh, what if we want to change this box and see the results at the same time there's a trick you can use you can simply move your box or your geometry you can use the find the move in transform occlusion here okay and i'm going to move that in the y direction a little bit so i can see it up here why not i'm going to move that 25.5 Maybe more, we can give that number slider more flexibility. Okay, and use that instead. Why not? And turn everything off. So when we reset this, and you can see that we can change the results. Okay, uh, how to get rid of those points and only get the meshes? I'm going to turn that off. In the output here, you can see that there is a mesh, some nulls, and then line. We just need this mesh. So I'm going to go to the sets and use this list item to pick the first one. So I'm going to pick up the first one. That's exactly the mesh we need. Okay, now we can change the dimensions. You can see it's going to update the results. Uh, we can even use the control shift to pick up these edges maybe we want to rotate them to make something like this so actually we can play with the edge uh, control shift edge rotation uh, maybe 20 degrees this time too much that that's okay minus 20 and now we can just Pick up these two edges and scale them a little bit. And you can see we can also uh, take this edge, move that like minus 10, and pick that edge and move that plus 10. Okay. And maybe we just increase this move. Okay, where does it go? Move that a little bit. In the y direction and we're good to go you can see that we can make this happen and produce the results let's go back to our tutorial and that's how you can use that uh, edge length to produce the results the next part is to go to this kangaroo 2 and in the meshes we have this soap film it's going to give you an extra tension on the meshes so I'm going to add this mesh here and also play with the strength if you want to but one is fine I'm going to use the shift key to add this up you can see that I can put that into a box bring that a little bit up okay uh, again I just uh, give the box to the input and you can see the results here simply giving us the results uh, you can also use this edge to scale it if you want to and make it like that so you can play with the input okay that was the uh, soap film also strength you can add remember that you can even increase that maybe like 2.2 but uh, be careful about this even increasing that too much is going to ruin the results you can see that if you want to have better results you have to increase the multiplication uh, maybe just increase that and it's going to take a while to get the results so remember that don't increase this strength too much it's going to ruin the results so just reset this and you can see that we have this nice smooth result uh, we can just simply bake this and close grasshopper and we will have this in rhino let's just go in and watch it like this 
Okay, if you want to learn more about and play around with this, uh, convert that into a pavilion. I'm going to extract all of these. I just take a look at this. If you look at it from top, you can see that these curves are a little bit out of plane. So in the advanced lesson for the course members, I'm going to explain how they can convert that into a plane curve and then make a loft from the surface and then convert that into a, a complete a pavilion using the Launchbox plugin. So if you want to learn more, uh, you can enroll in our course. You can check powercourse.com for more information. even download this example file from our website it's uh, the advanced lesson is underneath this lesson too okay I hope that this tutorial was useful remember to like this video so uh, other users can see that too and YouTube suggest that video to others and also share this video subscribe to our channel uh, thanks for watching and being with us uh, and see you next time. Bye.